Hello, everybody, and welcome into another edition of Rising to the Occasion. I am your host, Josh Marler. We have a lot to get to when it comes to the world of sports. You know we have always got you covered, and tonight we've got you covered with plenty. We're going to talk about the college baseball regionals, kind of recap that, and then also preview the Super Regionals, get into what's going to be happening in the world of college baseball. That's a lot of fun. We might as well touch up on the college softball as well as it's going behind my camera so I can watch it and look at you guys at the same time. It's beautiful beautiful thing I finally remembered to turn the TV on that's why I have it down here so I can watch when there's important games going on Um, but then also we've got uh, the NHL playoffs the Stanley Cup finals are finally here Uh, we have to touch up on that and talk about the NHL Stanley Cup finals that is the biggest thing Uh, and then of course getting into a two-minute drill where we will talk about plenty more but before we get into it want to first mention our sponsor for tonight and that is big frig big frig big frig is an amazing sponsor it's an amazing product if you are like me and you're tired of lukewarm drinks during your outdoor outdoor adventures activities where whatever you are doing where you might need a tumbler uh look no further than big frig because they have a a, a, a very high quality offer for you uh, high quality tough tumblers and amazing rugged coolers that keep your beverages and whatever else you might put into a cooler at perfect temperature uh, they're tumblers whether you're sipping your morning coffee uh, or your afternoon tea even for me your uh, evening coffee because i'm just a weirdo like that and i like to drink coffee even in the evenings uh, you know no matter what big frig has you completely covered uh and they they, their tumblers uh and their you know starting off with their tumblers they're totally built to perform uh their double and a double wall vacuum insulation to keep your drinks to hot for over five hours and cold for over 50 hours that's an amazing deal right there doesn't get much better than that plus they come in a variety of standard colors uh, and then on top of that they even give you custom branding options like they did for us so if you're doing some kind of corporate event or whatever the case may be where you might want your brand to stick out on your tumblers or or even your your coolers, you can get them to do custom branding for you. It's it's amazing. That's why we had them do this for us because it's just cool to be able to have your logo on things. Uh, you know, like your tumbler, it makes it seem more professional. If you're going to a to an event or uh, you know out, out and about, people might see that logo and question you about it. Their coolers, Big Freak coolers, are extremely rugged. Uh, they're durable, ready for any kind of adventure from tailgating to camping. We use ours all the time when we go tailgating. Uh, or even when we do our live shows on the road, uh, which we have done in the past, uh, if we are just going on vacation and need to keep some things cold, we we bring that that big frig cooler with us all over the place. The twenty quart Badlands coolers, they are the fan favorite. That's the one that you'll see in the overlay down below. That's the ones that Jeremy and I both have. We absolutely love them. Uh, and there's just there's there's so much that you can do with these coolers. Now we love Big Frig so much that we have partnered up with them to get you 20% off if you go to bigfrig.com. That's b-i-g-f-r-i-g.com and use that code Rising220. That's R-I-S-I-N-G T uh, T O. Uh, say sorry. Let me restart. R-I-S-I-N-G T O two zero for 20% off at bigfrig.com. Uh, go check them out. Check out everything that they have. Big Frig is an amazing product. We love their tumblers. We love their coolers. Sorry that ad read took so long. My brain is not working today. I have had a long day, long week. And uh, as I hear, I think also, Jeremy, you've had a long day, long week. How you How you been, man? Long day. That's for definite sure. I don't even know where to begin, but that's besides the point. I'm doing pretty good. Then it's been a amazing turnout for both the college baseball and college softball world series it's been a really really good storyline for a lot of these teams and i know unfortunately josh for you and for your oklahoma sooners it wasn't how we wanted it to go but that's besides the point then looking into the NHL playoffs i've been really really excited to see each team stride in night in night out just to try and make their way to the stanley cup finals and now we find out the stanley cup final set but i know we got a lot to talk about josh i'm gonna cut the chit chat let's get kicking with it yeah yeah absolutely i mean yeah it's definitely a bummer for my oklahoma sooners when it came to the baseball team uh you know start let's start off with the upside for oklahoma what i've got on on the tv behind uh the camera there we've got softball we're going to start off with that one because the softball college world series is starting right now as we're speaking Uh, i guess we've probably still got like another 20 minutes before the game officially starts but still uh, you know, watching these two teams, you've got Oklahoma going against the the Texas Shorthorns. Uh, we're throwing horns down all week long because we're trying to win this thing and go for a four peat. Oklahoma came in, they got whomped by Florida in that first game, and of course, double elimination. You've got another chance to redeem yourself, come back, and instead of losing again, Jada Coleman steps up to the to the plate 
and bombs one out uh, to the outfield, I believe in the eighth inning, if I remember correctly. So this is going into overtime, and she comes in clutch, just like Jada Coleman does all the time, more so on defense. uh, But she is a phenomenal player. uh, You know, so so proud of her in that moment. uh, So proud of these girls playing in the national championship again. These seniors have a chance to have four national championship rings on their hand. Uh, and then that is just an amazing thing. Never been done in history. They're one of two teams to have a three-peat, uh, UCLA being an- another team uh, back in, I, th- I believe, in the 80s, if I remember correctly. So uh, super excited. I really hope the Sooners can pull it off. Um, but they got a three-game series to, to, to try to win that, that four-peat, Jeremy. If Oklahoma definitely pulls this off, it's going to be talked about for forever, to say the least. But, I mean, you look at the entire – the entire softball series and how everything's gone. It's definitely been a great series to say the least. I mean, you see a lot of these teams that they come in, you see them during the regular season and they're struggling a little bit, but obviously come to this time where it's crunch time to where, you know, we have to play our A game night in and night out here. This isn't a situation to where we, we can let a little itty bitty thing slide here. We got to play on top of our game here, but going back to the Oklahoma game, that was definitely something I watched a little bit. And of course, seeing Jana Coleman launch the bomb out to, out to left field. That was definitely really, really fun to watch. I mean, you could definitely tell when she was rounding third, you can see the emotion in her face when she was going to home plate. Then obviously getting that big stomp on home plate, just to get the, get the momentum, not the momentum, but get the, get the happiness going for everybody. And of course I knew it was, it's definitely one of those situations to where I'm really getting more into watching softball. I mean, nothing against baseball. I know you've obviously been a diehard softball fan, especially for Oklahoma. I mean, it's definitely been a heck of a ride for the Oklahoma Sooners. And I seriously think they have a really, really good shot at potentially getting this four beat here. Well, and and you think about it too, Texas, uh, I'll be unbiased for just a second and try to be nice. For just a second. Texas is the number one team in the country for a reason. Uh, It's it's kind of a controversy whether it was Texas or Oklahoma. Ultimately, I don't care. I think Oklahoma got into a pretty good bracket. Obviously, they made it all the way here. And now we get to settle it on the biggest stage. And and on top of that, the reason why I think they chose to put Texas at number one seed is because they are one of two teams that were able to beat Oklahoma in a complete series this, this entire season. So, yeah. you know, I, 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 I'm willing to give them that much. They have been a phenomenal team. I won't take that away one bit. Um, but not only do I hate Texas always in horns down, um, just because I'm an Oklahoma fan, I can't stand their whiny ass coach, uh, you know, and, and, and I can't stand all of the complaining that he does constantly, you know, a- accusing Oklahoma of cheating somehow. And there's no way that they're they're getting they're They're doing something. I, I, I don't want to hear it. Uh, you know, we don't like that the College World Series, the, the Women's College World Series is played in Oklahoma City. Then do something about it. Win. Win. Win tonight, and I will give it to you. You can have it next year. Uh, I, I'm just I'm fed up with it. I'm really, really excited for the, for the opportunity, not just to win the, the national championship, not just to four-peat, but to be, then to beat a rival team in the process again. Because uh, I, I believe, let me think, last year I think it was, uh, was against Texas, uh, and then there was a year – prior uh in this this dynasty that we went against oklahoma state if memory serves me correctly uh, and so you know just a big opportunity for those those girls tonight really excited uh and, and hats off to texas for being as good as they have all year hopefully your road comes to a close starting tonight uh, it's a series of three so let's see who can get it done but uh, let's go ahead and jump over and get into the college baseball regionals getting down and uh, Recapping some of what we saw in the regionals uh, and then moving on into now uh, into the super regionals. So first off, Sooners losing to UConn. That was one that I didn't see coming. Uh, The fact that they lost the first game, came out, beat Duke the way that they did uh, with with a really big, uh, you know, really big closeout of of that game. Uh, Being able to pull out and win that game uh, against Duke, who was the number two seed in, in that regional. Uh, you know, Oklahoma looked really good. I just don't think they played their best baseball offensively. Uh, and, and you know, watching watching them against UConn, they just they didn't. Uh, and, and I also felt like pitching was really a problem in that last game where UConn won to move on. And so uh, I think that's why. But UConn, one of those, one of those upset teams, now they're going to have to go against Florida State, who is a very good baseball team. That's going to be uh, interesting down in Tallahassee, uh, Florida State against UConn. Uh, and then also going over, uh, we have Evansville kind of being 
a a little bit of a, a shakeup, you know, in in the super regionals. Evansville uh, winning against Eastern Carolina, uh, and then also uh, you know getting getting their way to where now they're uh, going to have to go against Tennessee, uh, and that's that's in Knoxville, and so that's that's a very interesting uh, one in that side of the bracket. Then you've also got. Uh, Kansas State making their way out, uh, you know, and they they played a very very good, uh, very tough schedule too. Uh, the fact that Arkansas didn't come out of their own regional really surprised me. We we talked about how good Arkansas's pitching is, uh, and so that's one that, that kind of surprised me that Kansas State is the one to come out of there. Um, but they're going to have to go against Virginia, a very good baseball school, uh, a, a baseball school that you do not take lightly. Uh, I, I expected them to win. I expected them to be in this stage, uh, and so now Virginia hosting that regional. Uh, is going to be a lot of fun. And then you've also got West Virginia against North Carolina, uh, two teams that I'm not surprised at all that they made it here, although Arizona, obviously the favorite, being the the, the regional you know host. Um, so it, it's kind of crazy to me that just on one side of the bracket, uh, you had two teams not win their own hosted regional. You had Oklahoma uh, and then also Arizona not, not winning uh, their – their respected regional, and so I, I I look at that. I think that's that's really crazy to look at. I guess a, a three actually, sorry, uh, because Evansville also won. Uh, and so yeah, I mean, so far, I mean, when you look at just that side of the bracket, uh, I mean, is there a team that really stands out to you? I mean, uh, talking about Tennessee, Florida State, uh, and then even Virginia, West Virginia, and uh, North Carolina. I think those are all really stacked teams coming in, into that side of the super regionals. I realistically don't know how you can specifically pick one team i mean like you just mentioned that side of the bracket that side's stacked honestly i mean you got so much powerhouse teams i mean if there's one series like if if i could pick all of them i will but if i had to pick one particular series i'm really curious to see the the unc west virginia series in chapel hill that one i'm really going to be excited for because i mean you see a lot of north carolina versus west virginia in basketball then i know obviously it's a complete different situation obviously going from the hardwood out to out to the baseball diamond but i mean this is that's definitely going to be a fun series obviously both teams are are really good finding a ways to get the ball to the bat and they're they're good for getting the RBIs and they're both good for going yard and finding that hole in the gap. But I mean, realistically, Josh, like I said, there's not one particular team that I on this side of the bracket I can really say that, oh, this is gonna be a walk off or this is gonna be something really simple for them. I mean, any of these teams realistically can make it into the situation and where they're gonna be going into Omaha. But I mean, it, it's so hard, but you look at obviously each one of them, UConn for what they obviously did against Oklahoma, then Tennessee. It just seems like Tennessee is always dominant. Yeah. But, I mean, it, it it's just so hard to pick, Josh. But I'm really curious to see how the UNC West Virginia series goes. Yeah, I think that's going to be a really interesting one. And with with uh, North Carolina and, and seeing that game, I believe it was North Carolina versus LSU that I'm thinking of. Uh, which that that whole regional that North Carolina regional that was crazy. that was that was a, a that was probably the best regionals that I've I've seen and I, I saw quite a bit of baseball <laughs> the, last, the yeah. last at least last weekend for sure uh, and that that might have been the the most fun overall top to bottom regional um, especially when you look at that LSU I believe it was LSU North Carolina if memory serving me correctly um, where they end up closing it out with with a, a pitcher. For LSU, that just didn't seem like he had it going, uh, and I feel like that pitching change really lost the game for him, and uh, they end up losing that one. That was that was pretty crazy. But that was uh, what's that? That was hard for LSU. I mean, I, I don't know why. Well, like, and they're such a great baseball school too, and so exactly. the fact that they the fact that they they've struggled so much. We talked about them too. How they got hot at the right time. This could be really scary. And I was really high on those LSU Tigers, even though they came in uh, at a really low, uh, really really low seating. Uh, and so I, I was I was very high on them. Um, but jumping over um, to the other side of the bracket, uh, you've got uh, I guess starting off, you've got Kentucky going against Oregon State. Kentucky winning their regional, also Oregon State winning their regional, kind of what everybody kind of would have would have expected. Uh, you know that you kind of usually expect the, the team that has that home field advantage but much like what we were talking about in, in the softball uh, regionals is that almost every team wins the regionals whenever they're hosting uh, and it's mm-hmm. just that home field advantage is something different in baseball that's what I love about uh, baseball so post postseason college baseball college softball postseason is getting that home field advantage 
that's pretty awesome. But uh, Kentucky having to go through uh, and, and win theirs, they had a really stacked one too. And you look at Indiana State and Illinois, uh, and even Western Michigan. But I, I think Indiana State and Illinois, that's that was a fun regionals to watch, uh, getting getting through those. And then also for Oregon State, uh, beating out Tulane, and then uh, also. Uh, you know, just after they beat Tulane, I felt like that was the, the toughest on their schedule. Um, but Oregon State moving into up against Kentucky. Uh, and then you've also got NC State winning their regional uh, with Bryant, James Madison, and, so- and South Carolina there. I didn't catch much of that regional. Uh, I did see a little bit of NC State. I saw they looked really dominant. Uh, they, they looked surprisingly good. Uh, and, and so I, I hadn't seen much of NC State this season. And so I really liked what I saw from them. High hopes for them going forward, too. Um, but they're going to be going against Georgia, who also won their regional. Very good team. Georgia, Georgia was killing, killing people. Uh, you know, and of course they started off with Army West Point. Uh, they ended up slaughtering them, uh, and then of course having uh, Georgia Tech and and uh, UNCW also in their regionals. They end up making it out alive. Uh, and then you've also got Clemson and Florida in the super regionals, where Clemson uh, is able to make it out of their regionals. Uh, and then you've got uh, Florida uh, also making it out alive, uh, which that one that one was really interesting. So uh, Florida beating out Oklahoma State that was kind of a shocker. Um, again, Oklahoma State hosting their regional there, and uh, that it, that one was that one was a really interesting regional. I, I was paying a lot of attention to that with Nebraska, Nebraska losing to Florida, coming out and, and beating Niagara, and it started off where it looked like Nebraska was going to be able to pull it out and upset Florida the second game. They just couldn't do it, uh, and so Florida makes it back to go against Oklahoma State again, uh, or I guess for the first time. They, they end up going against Florida State, uh, or sorry, Oklahoma State, and they end up beating Oklahoma State, uh, just put a, put a beat down on them, so they move forward. That was a really fun regional, too, overall to watch from top to bottom. Uh, and then you've also got Oregon. Uh, Oregon coming out of uh, the U, uh, UC Santa Barbara. Yeah, yeah, UC Santa Barbara. That was their regional. Uh, they, they hosted the regional. Uh, and so Oregon makes it out alive out of there. I really like what I'm seeing out of Oregon. We talked about them a little bit. They were kind of one of our Pac-12 favorites kind of coming through the Pac-12. Uh, and they looked really good coming out of their regional. Uh, moving forward, going against Texas A&M, who had a really fun series against Texas. Uh, so the Texas A&M they hosted ended up beating Texas in kind of a really thrilling game. I think that went into like double overtime, if I remember correctly. I, I think it was 11, uh, 11, 11 innings, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so I mean that was a really fun, a really fun matchup between Texas and Texas A and M as well. A little bit of a rivalry going on there. Uh, and so Texas A and M gets the last laugh. But coming out of that side of the bracket, uh, any teams you 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 really like? I mean, there's a lot of teams obviously on this side of the bracket. But the one team that I'm I'm kind of curious for is just because of what they were able to do against the. The Texas rivalry. I'm curious for what Texas A&M is able to bring. I mean, you look at what they were able to obviously play against when they were playing against the Longhorns. They were not willing to give up any way, shape, or form. They had a fight for this one, and it just goes to show you the the winning team came out on top, and Texas A&M just got their they got their way against Texas, and it it definitely was a really fun game. I got to watch a little bit of it, and it was definitely a back and forth game, and it was just really fun to watch. And then I know one of these times we're gonna have to try and make a little trip down there to go see the atmosphere and just see what a lot of the college baseball is all about. Obviously, down in the southern region, but I mean, outside of that, Josh, I mean, you you look at another one, you look at NC State and what they've been able to do this year. I mean, look at what they did in basketball. They proved a lot of people wrong. And now you look over to the baseball side of things, and NC State's kind of doing a little bit of that same situation. I mean, don't get me wrong. They're a good baseball school, but this was definitely this was definitely not a situation where you look at who they obviously had to get go play against. And, I mean, looking for the Raleigh bracket, obviously, like you said, NC State, South Carolina, JMU, Bryant, this is – it's not like it's a it's a cakewalk of a bracket here, but these guys have definitely been showing the this year alone what NC State we're trying to get these guys on the map here, and they're definitely doing a really good job this year. If I had to say, so. yeah, we we saw them have a pretty good a pretty good football season. We saw them have a phenomenal basketball season. Now yeah. having a really good baseball season, I mean that that school is definitely uh, popping up. I, I believe their women's basketball did really well this year too. Yeah, they did uh, pretty so, dominant. Yeah, so. Overall, NC State having a really good year. I'm, 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 I'm happy to see that for them. Uh, but, you know, at first, I think Kentucky, Oregon State, that's going to be a really fun matchup, tight yeah, matchup. I don't know who to pick in that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lean Oregon State, 
Um, but that's that's tough. Um, and Just then, a coin. yeah, pretty much. And then I, I'm going to pick NC State to upset Georgia. That's one of the upsets Ooh. that I see. I just, like, like we mentioned, they're just, that school is hot right now. They are on fire, and I, I really like them. Uh, I, I, I can get behind cheering for NC State now that Oklahoma's out uh, and, you know, Texas isn't in it for me to root against. Uh, so, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of going NC State, and, of course, I think Oregon's another team I'd like to see make it to Omaha. Um, but they've got a tough one against Texas A&M as well. I think that's going to be a really fun series. But best of three, uh, whoever wins makes it to Omaha. And guess what? I'm, I'm going to go down and check you guys out. So uh, let me know who uh, who I should go check out if they make it to Omaha. Uh, if, if you're a big baseball fan, uh, you know, the, the people who have watched this show for a while, you know that I'm, I am fresh getting back into baseball. Uh, and so I, I, I need some some suggestions. I'm, I'm willing to go to a few games. Uh, you know, I feel like you can get some tickets for for pretty good prices and stuff too. And so uh, I'm, I'm willing to go to a few games. I know we want to try to make some content down there if we can. And, uh, so let us know who's who's the teams that we should try to go and, and check out. We want to see that. So go ahead and comment down below. Uh, also want to let everybody know that uh, to make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Another great way to help us out over here on YouTube if you're watching. Uh, and, and of course, always five star reviews over on over on the podcast platforms as well. But uh, let's go ahead and get into the moment that Jeremy has been waiting for. The NHL Stanley Cup Finals are finally among us. We have the Oilers versus the Panthers. Kind of a shock. You know, we talked about it. I felt like the Oilers had a really good chance just by how hot they got at the right time. They were literally Florida from last year. This is like a a total reversal now. Um, so you've got mm-hmm. Florida, who came in as the top dog, and in, in the East, where last year they were the bottom, the bottom, you know, bottom of the pack, had to fight and claw their way all the way in, pun unintended, but it's there. Um, and so you know, this year roles reversed. Last year in the West, I feel like the Oilers were expected to do something strong. Or, or sorry, yeah, uh, did I get that backwards? In the East, uh, and so the Oilers in the West, uh, they were expected to do something something special last year. Like, man, this this team is strong enough; they're good enough; they could make it. They could make it all the way, and they end up kind of blowing it, and they don't really make it very far. And uh, now this year, roles completely reversed for both teams because the Oilers, bottom of the pack, have to fight and claw their way to get to the finals. Now they're here with. You remember earlier on in the season, the Oilers were doing poorly extremely poorly uh and and, you know they they had to fire their coach uh which was a questionable decision but obviously it worked out pretty well because after that start picking up the pace come in here uh and run the table make it all the way to the stanley cup finals Uh, i mean overall you look at the oilers you look at the you know what they've got to bring to the table i think they match up really well when it comes to uh, you know, uh, going against the Panthers. One thing that I think the Panthers, what I what I learned, especially from watching them against New York, uh, was just how strong that defense is. That defense does not allow you to to score ever. You know, like that that defense is so good, and it, it's not even really as as much Bob. You know, being there in the in the goal. You know, and in, 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 you know in the, between the goal goal posts, or I guess the between the pipes. Uh, I'm getting mixed up with football terminology here, but. Uh, you know, Bob Rowski, he's a good goalie. Don't get me wrong. I think he, he played phenomenal. But he didn't really have to do that much because his defense just wasn't letting the Rangers shoot. And that, that's happened all all series long, or really the, the all uh, playoffs long. And so I, I think this is going to be a really fun matchup. Who do you uh, who, who do you see as being some key roles? Uh, you know, what, what do you what do you kind of look at here uh, for being some key storylines here going into this this Stanley Cup Finals? My big thing is looking into the Stanley Cup Finals is the one big thing that sticks in my mind is puck management. Is who's going to get the the big possession of the puck? Who's going to get that dominant effort into the offensive zone? Who's going to keep that possession into the zone? Like you look at the Edmonton Oilers for example. Obviously, some guy named Connor McDavid, then Leon Draisaitl, Evan Bouchard, Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Ryan Nugent Hopkins is the guy who has been in Edmonton the longest he has seen so many people come and go and he's been on the good end of the stick for the Edmonton Oilers and he's definitely been on the bad stick for the Edmonton Oilers I mean he's definitely one of those guys that like I said he's seen so many so many people come and go he has been chomping at the absolute bits to get to this moment to where he is now but I mean you look at obviously on the other side for the Florida Panthers my big thing is don't rely too much on Sergey Bobrovsky I mean 
like Tobias Bornfa, Al, um, Aaron Eckblad, Oliver Edmund Larson, uh, Forsling, um, Mahura, then even obviously looking like their forwards like Barkov, Bennett, Cousins, um, Lomberg. There's definitely a lot of good attributes on both sides of teams. But I mean, like I said, if you get yourself, I've said this all these times, if you get yourselves into the penalty trouble, it's not going to be good. Because I mean, you look at the Edmonton Oilers and how fast paced they are on the power play. They are literally on the tape, off the tape. Their passing is so crisp. It's crazy. I mean, and don't get me wrong, the Florida Panthers, they have, they have a great power play as well. But my thing is, if you're going to play that guy down low on the bumper, you got to make those passes connecting. You got to get that for, shot off during the power me, play. For me, the Panthers, they are really good on the power play, but they're very gutsy when on the power play That's kill. The thing. Uh, and so whenever yeah. you're killing that power play, how's that going to fare out uh, you know, on the power, on the PK unit when you're going against the best power play unit, or one of the best power play units? Honestly, they, they shut down the Rangers, who was, I, I would say, the best power play unit all season long. For sure. They shut them down a lot throughout that series. That's really what what killed the Rangers, uh, and so yeah. that's that's going to be a really fun matchup to see that PK unit uh, that that does you know kind of crazy things. And they played really well against the Rangers uh, against a power play unit who is very smooth. Very they, they rotate extremely well. I don't think they are as good as they were last year in the in the postseason, but they're still really good uh, on on the power play. And not only that, do you know how many shots? Edmonton, so they, they beat the Dallas Stars uh, in game six, two to one. Do you know how many shots the Oilers took? Did you see that? They, took, t- they took 10 shots. I was going to say it was like 9 and 15. No, it was 10 shots all game yeah. long, 10 shots on goal. That is absolutely insane. Uh, where, you know, you look at the other side, uh, Dallas took 34 shots. That is just absolutely insane to me. Uh, you know mm-hmm. how how good their defense did. Uh, keep keeping. You know, I mean, you, you've you've got to give give credit to them. I mean, they they were just efficient on the shots they were taking. The first goal in Game Six by Connor McDavid coming out quick uh, and and putting that goal. And that one was crazy. That was we even filth. threw like five guys in order to sling that thing across and and get that into the in, into the net. I mean, it was. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and and look up Connor McDavid uh, Game Six. Goal. Uh, goal. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure that'll pop up. Uh, it was absolutely insane. It's one of those things that you would think you'd see mid-season when you know you, you're trying some new stuff out and you can be a little gutsy. You're doing this when you are trying to you're, you're trying to put a close to this series and move on to the, the Stanley Cup Finals. Uh, I mean, this is the first time in a long time that that uh, Canada has been this close to winning. A, a Stanley Cup. So I mean, it's there's a lot on the line for for Canada, uh, and so man. Oh, so do we do we cheer for Canada? Like, hey, you guys deserve one. You've waited long enough, or do we say, nah, screw it, we're going with USA? I feel like you got to be patriotic, stand true, stand be be a red blooded American, and I mean for them Panthers. I I, I I love Connor McDavid. All right, I think he is he's one of the reasons why I want to cheer for the Oilers. Plus, like, did you did you see the the clip going around of, of the Oilers fan? She she like oh. she flashed. Oh yeah yeah yeah! <laughs> I saw that this morning. I'm like, yeah, oh that my was, gosh. Maybe I'm a little bit of an Oilers fan now. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, Pretty but Josh, I'm gonna this out to you. Say. I mean, you you look at the odds. I was trying to find something really good for looking at the odds for the Edmonton Oilers for the championship. It's at plus one sixty. For the Florida Panthers, it's at minus one thirty. I mean, do you look at this side and think this is definitely like this is a it's, moment it's where very you close. wish? Do you wish? Do you wish this is the time where they can cut the Stanley Cup in half and give each team a part of the cup, just because both of these teams deserve to be in this situation here? No, we don't and, give away participation awards around here. Okay, well, at least I tried. But that is I mean, that is unacceptable. I can't believe you would even suggest such a thing. No, I mean, part of me. both of these. I, I I want to root for the underdog because, like I said, I love seeing like what what Florida did last year. I was cheering for Florida last year because I was like, man, oh, yeah. like, how could you not? It's tough for me to cheer for them this year because they whooped up on my Rangers. Um, but I don't want Canada. I, I love the fact that we're keeping that cup in America. 
You know, U.S. versus Canada. You know, I, I learned something new today too. So you know, I, something I always thought about, but I just never looked it up uh, until today. Uh, so the Stanley Cup, you know, how it's got all of the teams they they get their names put on the, on the Stanley Cup. I always thought like eventually you run out, right? You run out of room. No, they they add plates onto it. Yeah, well, yeah, they they add plates, but you know, like you know, like the Stanley Cup's only this big, right? Like let's let's say it's this big. You've only mm-hmm. got that much room to put plates on there. You can't put more once you run out of room, right? Do you yeah. know what they do whenever they run out? The so they've they've got different barrels. So they top they chop the top or the top ring off. So like the older the oldest winners, their names get removed. Which yeah, yeah, that kind of sucks. But they remove that and add a new new ring to the bottom where they put the new plates. Yeah, I, I, that, I didn't that's I didn't know that that's what happened. I just always thought, like, how do they not run out of room eventually? But that's how that's, they do it in City awesome. with the Car Cup, just because. I mean, do you see the older styles? And I mean, they just take the new, the old ones off, and they just keep doing it just like they do the Stanley Cup. So I kind of knew that a little bit. Yeah, I see. I, I didn't know that at all. I thought that was pretty cool. So maybe that's that's new news for for somebody else listening too. <laughs> uh, but I, I thought that was pretty sweet, though, just the fact that you've you've got you know that it, it sucks that you have to take take off the old winners you know the oldest winner take their their names off but it, it's cool that they, they keep that tradition going and stuff i didn't mm-hmm. know that that's how that was coolest trophy in all of sports oh for sure hands down i don't think it gets cooler than, than the stanley cup there's some other ones that are pretty cool i think they compete uh like if you go to bcs crystal football days that one was oh, pretty those sweet. Are so sweet but stanley cup goat of all all trophies fight me about it i don't care um but Let's go ahead and move on. Uh, we're going to do the two-minute drill. Uh, Jeremy had a busy day, so I told him we're going to do a little bit different. Usually, Jeremy uh, leads it off and kicks it over to Blake and I, but Blake's not not with us tonight. Uh, he's been a busy man, uh, you know, and so uh, he is not going to be with us tonight. Some things that we're going to get to here on the two-minute drill. Jeremy, you ready? Let's roll. For those who don't know, usually it's Jeremy reading them off to, to Blake and I. Tonight it's going to be me reading off some of these topics and discussing them with Jeremy. And he's got about two minutes. We're not really strict on it, but it's a two-minute drill. You're trying to get it done in two minutes or less to kind of respond to these big headlines. That way we can move through these headlines quick at a good pace. Starting off, topic number one, Birmingham Southern School closes their doors permanently. Uh, so the day after this news that that uh, the Birmingham Southern School closes closes their doors, uh, their baseball team pulls off a walk off home run to beat Randolph uh, Macon, uh, Randolph Macon. I'm not sure how to say that in the D3 World Series. Uh, now their incredible run ca- came to a close after a 10 to 11 uh, loss to Wisconsin Whitewater. So they they get on a, a walk off home run. Huge, huge run that they're on right now, uh, and, and just big news after finding out that their their school is closing their doors permanently. Now that they lost uh, ten to eleven to Wisconsin Whitewater after having a commanding lead, too, uh, they end up losing that game. They get kicked out of the, the uh, series, and now this team will never play again. Jeremy, I mean, it was just it's crazy uh, that, that the the emotional roller coaster that those guys had to go through. And now such a bittersweet moment uh, because now not just your season, but your school is completely done with, man. It's definitely it's definitely hard to see that aspect. I mean, I've seen a lot of this going around just for saying the baseball team is keeping everybody in positive thoughts. And I mean, it's definitely sad to see that they had to go out this way. I mean, don't get me wrong. I've heard a little about about the Wisconsin Whitewater. They're a really good baseball program. But, I mean, it's definitely an unfortunate thing just because there's there's no we got this next year. There's no – there's none of that. This is the final hurrah for all of us. I mean, I know for those seniors, it's definitely not how they wanted to go out. But, I mean, even looking at, like say, like the freshmen, for example, I mean, they obviously wanted to keep this going and just to – get the seniors all hyped up just so they can keep keep getting closer to a championship. But I mean, unfortunately, Josh, it's it's a really, really sad occurrence. And I I can I'm thankful that I've never had to be in that situation. But I mean, 
it's it's definitely an unfortunate turn of events for the school not being able to open the stores next year and for this baseball team and hats off to them just for keeping everybody so happy in the time that they got to play but obviously speaking from all of us we wish them nothing but the best yeah yeah absolutely uh sorry my face was there was to a uh... Poorly yeah, called you were watching strike. some TV. Poorly <laughs> striked. Poorly called strike. Uh, uh, it was like down at her shins. No, it's just ter- terrible that that happened. Uh, and, you know, the, the the thing that came to my mind whenever I heard about this was uh, Riley Green's song, uh, Grandpa's Never Die. Uh, you know, for them, it's, man, I wish our schools never closed. Um, but kind of maybe we can make up a mashup for them and send it to them and let them know, hey, we're thinking about you guys. You know, we wish this didn't have to happen to you. But moving on, uh, UFC 302 concluded with Dustin Poirier losing to Islam Makachev. Uh, great fight. Great fight. If you didn't get, get to watch that one live, go back and watch it on replay. That's what I had to do because I wasn't able to watch it live. Phenomenal fight. Uh, Dustin Poirier goes out on a great note even though he lost. But he ended up suffering a broken nose, rib, and a partially torn ACL in, in his loss to Islam Makachev. Uh, and then, of course, also at the end of the fight, also hinting that this may be his last fight. He's not sure yet. He hasn't made anything official, but it might be his last fight. Uh, I mean, what a warrior to to go out, not, not only to go out the way that he did, he cut Islam up pretty well. Uh, he, he he kept it very close. Uh, and then, you know, to, to find out afterwards that he had, we knew that his nose was broken. That was obvious. But broken rib and a partially torn ACL, dude's a freaking warrior. That's... It's one thing to have like a broken nose just because you can still fight through and persevere through that pain. But I don't, if you tell me I had a broken rib and a partially torn ACL, there would have been no chance that I would have even continued to keep fighting. I know, obviously, you got a lot of adrenaline dump going in you, but still, that's so much pain and agony it just just even thinking about it just hurts me just and i'm don't get me wrong my body's been put through a lot with all the athletic sports i've done but i mean i've i'm thankful i've never broken a bone or torn anything but i can only imagine how excruciating that pain had to be during that fight it was definitely a really really good fight don't get me wrong josh Dustin Poirier, he he had it a lot closer than what I was anticipating. Like I knew from the get go, it was going to be a really close, good fight, but my hats is off to him. Like I said, if, if you were to tell me (laughs) something good, I'm listening. I'm listening. Um, you know, I'm good at multitasking. I can, I can watch and listen to you. (laughs) Oh yeah, for sure. But I mean, like, like I said, if you were to tell me I had a broken rib, a partially torn ACL and a broken nose, I would have just, I would have thrown the towel and thrown the white flag, and I said, I'm done. I don't care, but hats off well, to him just because that was a great fight. Yeah, I mean, UFC and and uh, UFC fighters and hockey players, two of the toughest dudes. Uh, I forget the, the dude's name. The dude that he played for the Winnipeg Jets uh, ruptured his testicle in the mid-game. I don't know if I'm oh, allowed to say that on YouTube. I know who hopefully, you're talking about. Hopefully that's okay um, to say on YouTube. I don't think that's too graphic. That's, that's a, a body part. Uh, ruptured that. And... Ended up finishing the game? Like, what the heck? Uh, well, even yeah, look I mean, at the one kid who got cut in the face. He had, I think, like over 20 stitches and oh, came yeah. back in a cage. Yeah, yeah, I forget who that was too now. Um, I'm, I'm, I know who you're talking about. That Yeah, I mean, just crazy stuff it was, happens. It was and, Blake and, Wheeler. Who had the oh, it was Blake Wheeler. Private. Yeah, it was It was Blake Wheeler. That's right. Yeah. Um, and, But, yeah, I mean, just crazy stuff happening there. I mean, and then, you know, with with – Dustin Poirier. There's there's other guys uh, that we've that we've seen. I'm trying to think. Not too long ago, a fighter fractured his his forearm, still won the fight. Uh, and then you know you go back to like the reason why I love Macy Barber. I'm a huge Macy Barber fan. I've been trying to get her on the show um, because I, I I love watching her. Not only is she she easy on the eyes, but she's a warrior. Uh, and yeah. and she she there was one fight that stands out to me where she fought, uh, and I can't remember who she was fighting against, but she ended up tearing. Her, her ACL mid-fight, and they, they were pretty sure that's what it was. She couldn't put any pressure on it, and the doctor was, like, close to stopping it, like, checking her out, like, I don't think you should go out there. And she said, no, I want to finish the fight. Finish the fight anyways. You know, there's stuff like that, man, just crazy. Uh, you know, and now yeah. finding this out about Dustin Poirier. Uh, like I've said before, I've never been a Dustin Poirier f- f- a fan, but hell of a lot of respect for wow. him, dude. I, I, I always have, have respect for him. 
Uh, I don't and, have bad hair, but hats off to you, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, because I, you know, I, I've never, I've never not had respect for him as a fighter. Uh, I want to set that that straight. I know I've I've talked about him. I'm not a big fan. I, I was cheering for him this this past weekend. Um, but anyways, going on to the next one in the two minute drill, sticking in with UFC. Conor McGregor, we're extremely excited about UFC 303, but he ended up canceling the press conference for this 303. Uh, you know, it, due to a quote unquote series of obstacles out of their control. I'm not sure what was going on. There's rumors that maybe there was a injury that they felt like they needed to get taken care of. There's another really big hit, um, but <laughs> sorry, I'm getting a little sidetracked. See, this is why we don't put sports on the TV, Jeremy. Um, but he you turned the TV on. <laughs> I did. So apparently there might be some sort of injury that they felt like they needed to tend to right away uh, to check out. That's possible. That's not confirmed. That's just rumor. Whatever the case may be, there's a lot of people thinking maybe maybe Connor's just second thinking second guessing this fight thinking man i've got all this money do i really need to go fight michael chandler do i need to go into this fight at all do you think this fight's still happening and if so do you think it's you know is it is it truly something that was just hey this was just a, you know something that came up uh let the show goes on uh, or or do you think that maybe conor mcgregor might back out of this fight i mean there's a there's a 50 50 in me the reason why i think it's going to go down is because you look at how many conor mcgregor fans out there want to see him back in the octagon and put on put on one big show just because we all know at the end of the day if conor mcgregor gets gets back in the octagon he's going to apologize to absolutely nobody i mean (laughs) he's he's just going to go off like he usually does but i I had that clip Oh, I know. That was an absolute great clip. But, I mean, the other part of me is thinking, like, like you mentioned this. I can't remember which episode exactly, but Conor McGregor, he's got – he has enough money. He's got enough lifestyle to live already outside of the UFC and everything. And now he's does a movie he, star. Exactly. I mean, does he really want to put his, his other things that he's always involved with behind him and get back into the UFC here? I mean – don't get me wrong. I'm definitely one of those people to where I want to see Conor McGregor get back into the arena. And it's definitely – when he's in the arena, it's definitely a whole different aspect. I mean, obviously, I know you know as much as I do, Josh. When, whenever they get two really good fighters into the octagon, the crowd always gets into it, and then they always start chanting a whole bunch of different things. Some things we can't even repeat on air just because they're that excited about it. But, I mean, the – Oh, no. Are you listening? Yeah. <laughs> no but i mean i, I want to see this i just want to see this fight go on dude this is definitely one of those moments i want to see conor Walking mcgregor in the mcgregor wonderland oh gosh. yeah no, i mean mcgregor is you can say what you want to say about him he is cocky he's arrogant uh he's he's i don't care you could you could say it all he's extremely exciting watching uh, and he, whether it be in the fight or pre-fight post-fight all of that. He's a very fun personality to watch. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you, man. I really hope this fight still ends up going through. Uh, it's really going to disappoint me if he doesn't uh, end up fighting this for some reason, whether it be injury uh, or even just backing out because he's a, he's a millionaire. He doesn't have to. Sure. Uh, he's also I, I think he's a very good businessman, though. Uh, and I know he's he knows that it, he understands that it's not good for business for him to back out of this fight. So I don't think he's going to back out because of money. I think it's going to take an, an act of God to pull him out of this fight. That's what, just what I think. But yeah. going on, we've got the Utah Jazz. They go old school and rebrand by going back to the Mountain Purple, Midnight Black, and Sky Blue. They kind of bring back this feel of that Carl Malone, John Stockton days back in the old school. Uh, and I've, I do have that as well. So we can take a look at the new uniforms being brought back. We're big. We're big proponents of hey, we if we're gonna have uniforms, they better be pretty sweet. What are you thinking about these new Jazz uniforms after they after they go away from the very new uniforms of that black and gold kind of feel? Uh, now they switch back to that that purple, blue, and black. I like them. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I mean the the black one is the one that I like the most for the jersey. But I mean, you look at any of these retro kind of style jerseys. Retro has always been a fond thing of mine. I, I mean, the Utah Jazz they definitely have a really good style, and obviously having the mountain in the background, then even all their jerseys, obviously that's a really good touch up for them. But I mean, you 
that's what it, it to me i want to see more teams bring back retro jerseys i mean some of the some of the teams back in the day they had really good retro jerseys but i mean of course now you get obviously to this new style and new schooling everything there's always different brands like nike's always coming out with different things or jordan's coming out with different things but i mean these styles i really do like they're definitely going to pop that's for sure the white's definitely going to pop under the bright lights in the utah but josh it, I hope they keep these things just because oh, yeah. it's definitely going to, they're definitely going to sell these things. I really, I realistically think they will. I, I kind of want one. I love that. Uh, my, my high school colors were purple and gold. Uh, and so I, I love, I love that purple. Uh, I, I, I didn't used to, there's, there's certain teams that have ruined purple for me, but yeah, I, I love this. Uh, and, and I like this so much better. I, I don't like the, the no, more modern jazz that they currently have, I guess before this, you know, because they just put those out, I think, like a couple of years ago, uh, those right. black and gold, and now they go back to this because because apparently they did a lot of a lot of surveying and kind of questioning fans and stuff like that, and uh, they wanted to make it feel like Utah, and so of course putting those mountains on there, uh, and so yeah, I, I love it. Uh, I'm I'm right there with you, man. I'm I'm really excited. I love the purple with the bright white. Uh, that's that's pretty slick. Uh, and then even yeah. the white jersey, really all of them are pretty sweet. I don't care for the black one, like you said, as much ju- the black uniforms, just because uh, it's just that that old like J with the basketball logo instead of like the Utah with the mountains. I love that, um, but I'm right there with you. I don't want all teams to just have straight like ret- this is kind of like a modern retro, which is really cool. They're rebranding back to that. I think they should stick with it, but I'm with you. I think every team should have a retro jersey uh, and and use them every once in a while. You know, just pop them out here and there just to. To excite the fans, give the give the fans uh, what they want, and they love to see cool uniforms. Mm-hmm. But going on uh, to Joel, uh, sorry, Joe Pavelski. For some reason, when I say his name, my my tongue wants to add an L on the end. Joel Pavelski. <laughs> it's Joe Pavelski. He ends up re- uh, announcing uh, the Dallas Stars current Dallas Stars player announces that he is retiring after 18 seasons in the NHL. Uh, and Joe Pavelski, he's retiring after uh, after his 18th season. He's finished career with 476 goals and 592 assists. Uh, the dude was an absolute animal. We know how aggressive he plays. We know how much heart he puts into every game, every moment of every game. Uh, pretty sad news to see a, a legend of the game go on, but he's had a long and fulfilling career. 18 seasons can definitely put a whole big toll on the body. I mean, yeah. Joe Pavelski is one of those icons. I mean, you look back to when Joe Pavelski, obviously with the San Jose Sharks, obviously that's where his career began. I mean, Joe Pavelski was the star for the San Jose Sharks for the longest time. Then obviously once the time came to where he got traded to the Dallas Stars, it was definitely time for a new beginning. Of course, a lot of people didn't necessarily think Joe Pavelski was going to um, – played with the five seasons that he did with the Dallas Stars. A lot of people were thinking he was going to maybe do two or three seasons. And, I mean, he definitely proved a lot of those people wrong. I mean, like you said, 476 goals and 592 assists, that is a unbelievable storyline. I mean, playing over 1,300 games, I think it was like 1,330, 1,332 or something like that for an exact number. But, I mean, Joe Pavelski, he was definitely one of those guys to where when you always go back to watch NHL highlights from back in the day, Joe Pavelski was always a guy that was going to be known for at least having one or two highlights back in the San Jose Sharks era. I mean, don't even get me wrong. Obviously, now the Dallas Stars era, I mean, he definitely had a lot of time and he had a lot of talent. I mean, unfortunately, I wish I wish Joe would do one more year one more year, or even maybe two more years, just to get just to get twenty seasons in. But obviously, it, your body is only capable of doing so much when you're when you're getting up there for playing wise and age and everything. But obviously, from all of us at Rising the Occasion, Joe, we wish you a great retirement and thank you for all the amazing memories and everything that you've given us to watch on TV for the, whether it be with the Stanley, I mean, with the San Jose Sharks or the, or the Dallas Stars. Yeah. I mean, not everybody's Joe Thornton where they can <laughs> last for 5,000 years in the NHL. Oh that dude God. played forever, man. Ever. But, you know, hats off to him. Cause I don't know how you take that beating. Hockey's one of the like 
toughest sports on your body too. Like mm -hmm. your hips have to be killing you after that many. Years. I know that pain. Yeah. I mean, just, Ooh, I don't, I don't want to. Um, but yeah, I mean, it didn't Joe, didn't he play for the Minnesota wild as well for a little while? Joe Pavelski. I don't believe he did. No, no, he didn't. Uh, I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of when he played against the Minnesota wild, uh, okay. and, and that that's that's why my brain was making that connection. They played against yeah. each other in uh, I think it was last year in the the Stanley Cup playoffs. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I mean, just phenomenal career. Uh, yeah, like you said, extremely happy for him that he was able to end it on his own uh, own terms and a phenomenal season at that, dude. You make it made it all the way to the conference finals. Mm -hmm. That's that's something to be proud of in your team, and and you you brought that team to prominence. You know, you were you were a big part of why that team was a force to be reckoned with in the South. That is crazy. Bringing hockey to Dallas. Congratulations, Joe, on an amazing career. I uh, wish nothing but the best for you. And if Joe ever sees this, Joe, we want you on, man. We want you on the show. So come on. Uh, we love talking hockey over here at Rising 2. Um, but want to let everybody know you can always find some merch. We've got a new merch shop. Uh, you can find that merch at rising2.com slash shop. Go check that out. Uh, check out our new merch over here with Herd at Sports, uh, presented by Herd at Sports here. And so uh, they put together a really fun uh, merchandise shot for us. So go check that out. Uh, we'd like to, to get that going and get you guys kind of showing up, showing your love through that, that merch shop. Um, that definitely a big way to help us over here and also let her know that we got, we got supporters out there. We got, we got people watching, we got people. Yes, sir. Us. Um, but we love you guys all so much. Uh, that's all we got for the two minute drill. And that's all we got for this episode. Uh, a little recap here, or I guess, uh, uh, catching you up even though this is already going to be over by the time you guys are watching this, Oklahoma's up two to zero after the first and in, first uh, inning and in women's softball national championship. Uh, they ended up hitting a, a, a dinger out there. Tiara Jennings putting a dinger out and putting a, a two run home run on the, on the, on the day already. So love to see that. Um, hopefully they end up winning tonight, making it one game easier for them. But uh, we all we love you guys so much for all of the support. Thank you for watching on YouTube. If you are watching on YouTube, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can hit that like button as well, uh, and comment down below. We want to hear from you guys. Uh, let me know you. What, whatever whatever it is that you like to comment. Just tell us, hey, we like to see that too. We like to hear from you. You can follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, X, formerly known as Twitter, all of that fun stuff. So go give us a follow, and you can also keep up with all of our updates over there as well. Uh, and if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts, make sure to give us that five-star review. That's the best way to help us on those platforms. Again, we thank you guys so much. Uh, you can find everything that we, we do over at rising2.com. So please go check us out there. Uh, we thank you so much for all of the love, all the support. Man, we'll, we'll catch you all next time.